Dear Captain, I finally bought a drum machine. But making electronic music is way harder than I thought. How the hell do I use this thing? Well, you're in luck. Hello everyone, this is... Welcome to Drum Machine 101, where you will learn about drum machines, rhythm, and probably also about other machines that go In this first episode, we'll take a look at how to program a simple beat into a drum machine. And don't worry, if you don't have a drum machine, everything you learn here is also useful when working with a computer. First off, why would you use a drum machine? A drum machine can accompany you while you're practicing or composing. And like a real drummer, it never gets tired of playing the same rhythm for hours. But it can also be your main rhythm instrument, which comes in especially handy if you're an introverted electronic musician and want to avoid meeting other people. Maybe your band doesn't have a drummer or you have no room for a drum kit. Perhaps you've realized that acoustic and electronic drums can work together very well. Maybe your drummer's in rehab, but you still want to get that record done without him. <coughs> or maybe you just love electronic sounds, buttons and blinking lights. Either way, you have to tell the drum machine what to play. But how do you do that? Let's say these eight steps together represent one bar of music. Let's put some kick drums into there. And press play. Each time the bouncing ball hits one of those steps, its sound is played. This is called four to the floor. Four quarter notes that form one bar of music. If you'd use a metronome, these are exactly the beats you'd hear. One, two, three, four. In this case, we'd be at a speed of about 56 beats per minute, or BPM for short. This is the beat, or pulse, of the song. Well, this gets boring on its own after a while, so to make it more interesting, we are going to replace every other kick drum with a snare drum. And, to top it all off, we'll fill up the row with hi-hats. On a real drum machine, you don't just have one row of steps to place your instruments on. Every instrument gets its own row of steps. What you see here is called a step sequencer. The step sequencer tells the drum machine what instruments to play and when to play them. In this case, it divides one bar of music into eight steps and each instrument has its own separate track. This means that different instruments can also play together at the same time. We can turn any of these steps on or off to make different beats, like this. And if you go absolutely nuts on the hi-hats, you'll eventually end up with something like trap music. But more on that in a future episode. Let's recreate the simple pattern from before on some common types of drum machines. This is the TT78 Beatbot by Cyclone Analogic. It has two distinct modes of operation. In play mode, we can play our drum patterns. In write mode, we can also edit them. Here you can see the patterns I've already saved. Each lit button represents an occupied slot. The unlit ones are empty. We have four banks available, with 16 patterns each. So, 16 patterns in the red bank, 16 patterns in the yellow bank, 16 in the green one, and 16 in the blue one. That's 64 slots in total to save our patterns. Let's select an empty one and hit play. As expected, we don't hear anything yet since the pattern is empty. 
We want to change that, so we switch into write mode. Now we can see the running light of the sequencer. Most drum machines give us 16 steps on which we can place our drum hits. So does this one. One bar of music is divided into 16 steps, giving us a resolution of 16th notes. If we want a simple 4 to the floor quarter note beat, we need to place the drum hits on steps 1, 5, 9 and 13. That's every fourth step. For your convenience, this exact spacing is marked on many drum machines. You can activate steps simply by pressing them. Press a step again to clear it. With this dial, you can switch to a different instrument. We just entered the steps for the bass drum. Now we want to sequence the snare drum. And finally, the hi-hats. Instead of placing the steps, we can also enter our rhythm by tapping it on this button. The drum machine corrects any sloppy timing you might have to the nearest 16th note. This is the Electron Digitakt. It's quite a bit more advanced, but the basic principles are the same. It can save many, many projects with 8 banks of 16 patterns each. You'll probably never run out of space for patterns with this one. Let's select an empty, unlit pattern and press play to start the sequencer. As you can see, the 16 steps are arranged differently here, into two rows. Half the bar is on top, the other half below. The top row of steps lets us select and play an instrument. The selected track is lit in a dim red light. Because every instrument has its own pad, we can also do some live finger drumming. If we want to play steps on the sequencer, we need to enter record mode by pressing the record button. Again, press an active step to remove it. To switch instruments, we could leave record mode, select a different instrument and enter record mode again, but we can also get there much faster by just pressing track and the instrument we want to switch to. Let's place the snare drums. And finally, the hi-hats. Let's enter them by tapping the rhythm. To do that, we enter live recording mode by pressing record and play at the same time. And have a go at it. Most drum machines will function similarly to the two you've seen before. Let's apply what we've learned and program a beat into this drum machine, the Arturia Drum Brute Impact. You can already do a lot with this simple beat. In fact, it's the foundation of many well-known songs. Let's add a few more hi-hats. And finally, we'll crank up the tempo a bit. Well, that's it for this episode, but let's be honest, you want to see where this is going. Hit subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss the next episodes. If you want to help us make more videos like this one, you can support us on Patreon. Link in the description.